Hey guys, welcome back to another Tech Debt Repair video. In today's episode, we're going to be working on this MacBook Air. Uh, this is a 2018 or 19. Uh, this one's a rose gold model, one of the last ones you could get in this color. We're going to be showing you how to replace the battery on this unit. Uh, if you guys are interested in having your MacBook repaired, uh, we do offer mail-in repair services. Uh, but in today's tutorial, we're going to show you how to do everything we do here. So let's go ahead and get into today's repair. So the very first thing we're going to do is flip the unit over. And we're missing some pentalobe screws here, specifically the two at the top here. Uh, but we're going to remove all uh, eight, normally ten, of these pentalobe screws. Uh, the ones at the top are going to be longer than the ones at the sides and bottom. With those screws removed, we can go ahead and pull off our bottom case. And you can see here, uh, this right uh, battery cell here, this is a three cell battery, one, two, and three. This cell is failing and swelling, uh, which caused our top case to already begin to open. Uh, but yeah, this is why we are replacing the battery. Typically you see uh, two or uh, as little as one cell go bad uh, when you need your battery to be replaced. Uh, the battery typically holds say 60 to 70% and then randomly when you hit, I don't know, 20, 30, it'll just turn off instead of staying on uh, because it moves to this cell and this cell is completely bad. Even though it tells the battery controller it has 100% charge, it really has nothing. The very first thing we're gonna do once we open up any MacBook or any computer for that matter is disconnect the battery. This is our battery connection here. We're gonna go ahead and take a plastic spudger and remove the battery from the logic board. There we are. So that's our battery disconnected from the logic board. And our unit's now safe to work on. The next thing we're gonna grab is gonna be a T3 screwdriver. We're gonna remove this retention plate and two T3 screws for the trackpad flex cable. We're gonna go ahead and unplug our trackpad. And on some models, uh, newer MacBooks, spe specifically the M1s, uh, you're able to go ahead and actually disconnect the trackpad flex cable uh, right here. But on our 2018-19, uh, the A1932, you're not able to. So the uh, rest of the trackpad flex cable actually goes under the board here to the keyboard. You have two options. You can either fully remove the logic board or the simpler one, you can go ahead and drop out the trackpad uh, with these T5s here, which is what we're gonna go ahead and do here. So we're gonna go ahead and open up our unit and the trackpad is going to be pretty much dangling. You have to be very careful here. What you're gonna go ahead and do is take your plastic spudger and unlatch the trackpad flex cable from the trackpad and then unplug it. So yeah, once we have it unplugged, we can go ahead and pull it out. It is taped uh, or adhered to the trackpad here uh, with a little adhesive strip here. Sometimes that can be difficult to get off. Other times it, it is pretty weak and comes right off. Uh, but that's our trackpad disconnected. We don't have to remove it, uh, but optionally you can in this step. I'm not going to, I'm just gonna line it back up so it's ready for reinstallation later on. And now we have to go ahead and unplug our speakers on both sides. So the right-hand speaker over here, which again is gonna be uh, glued to the logic board and the left-hand speaker up over here, which doesn't have any adhesive. Uh, the next thing we have to do is take some tweezers. You go ahead and remove these pull tabs. Uh, with these ones, you don't really need tweezers actually, unless they snap like this. Uh, but these pull tabs run on a glue strip that goes about up to here on these speakers and keeps them in the top case. So I like to use tweezers because I can grab uh, the top section here, kind of roll it up which helps grab onto that rest of the adhesive strip there. Once I get it rolled a few times, I can just pull straight back and it pulls all, or if not all, most of the 
uh, adhesive strip off the speaker there, which there's a little bit left here. So we're gonna do the same thing where we pinch and roll and then pull some more. A little bit left on this tab here. And in this case where both of the pull tabs actually snapped before you removed all of the pull tab, I'm gonna show you how to remove them. It's a little bit more difficult. We're gonna use some isopropyl alcohol. I like to use 98% or higher to soften the adhesive strip. And once we let that sit for a second, we're gonna take our plastic spudger and come underneath the speaker's edge. Just work our way up slowly here. And there we are, that's our speaker on the right hand side removed. As well as on the left hand side here in just a second. There we are. So that's both our speakers removed and it seems like this unit was worked on because these don't typically have adhesive at the top here. Uh, these must be replacement ones. I believe OEM from the factory, they only have the strip down here. At least the M1s do for sure if you're working on one of those, which is very similar to this here. So next we're gonna grab a T3 screwdriver and remove both these screws on either side of the battery bracket here. Once we remove those, we're on to the three on each side, six in total of pull tabs that are keeping the battery to the top case. Same thing here, you wanna kinda grab, twist, and roll. And these ones typically like to come out. That is all of our adhesive pull tabs for the battery removed. And as you can see, it's now gonna come right out. So this is our old battery, which we can set aside. I recommend recycling these at a recycle center near you. Uh, if you remember to go ahead and clean off your surface here, there will be some residue from the pull tabs, as well as dirt, grime, everything else that gets in your laptop uh, before you put your new one in. All right, so we have our brand new battery here. As you can see, it's our very own. If you guys are interested in uh, picking up any parts for this model or your model or any tools you see in today's video, we do have them linked in the description below or available at techdef.com. Again, if you guys are interested in having your unit mailed to us for repair, we do offer free two-way shipping, uh, both here and back to you. Check out the links below for more about that. If you guys are interested in any sort of data recovery or data work, we also handle that in-house. Again, if you guys are interested, check out the links below or check us out at techdep.com. So we went ahead and prepared our battery for installation uh, by making sure the adhesive tabs were all ready to go. After doing so, we're gonna line it up with the two screw points as well as the center here and set it into place. we're gonna grab our four T3s and screw our battery back down. So we've got our speakers, which we put new adhesive on, which we're gonna go ahead and set back into place after removing the protective strip on the adhesive. And once you set them in, we're gonna go ahead and plug them in. We're gonna repeat the same process over on the right-hand side as well. And that's our speakers reinstalled. So the next step we're gonna do here is plugging our trackpad back in. Uh, so to do that, we're gonna go ahead and open the unit up slightly. I'm gonna make sure that these, I'll show you in a second here. So what you wanna make sure is that 
all of your washers here are present and in the correct orientation. Uh, these are responsible for giving your trackpad a tactile click. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and feed the cable through the cutout here and into the connector right here for the trackpad while holding it open. And once we get it in, we're gonna go ahead and close the retention bracket. And there we are. That is our trackpad ready to be screwed back in. So all we have to do is line up all these standoffs here and screw all of these screws back in. It's gonna be two on each corner, one in the center, and these are gonna be T5s. So with our trackpad secure again, we can go ahead and plug it into the logic board and reinstall its retention bracket and two T3 screws. And now we're ready to go ahead and plug in our battery connection to our logic board. So to plug in our battery, of course, we're just gonna take our battery connector, line it up and slide it in. And there we are, that's our battery connected. We're gonna go ahead, grab a charger, plug it in and make sure everything works. So before we put the bottom on, once again, we're gonna go ahead and grab a charger and plug the unit in and just make sure it is charging, turning on and holding the charge. Let's go ahead and turn it on now. As you can see, it did power on, but let's go ahead and check uh, that it is Detecting a charge, which it is at 54%, that it stays on after we unplug it, which it does, and that it charges when we plug it back in, which it just did. We're gonna check both ports, perfect, just to make sure the ports aren't part of the problem. Uh, so now that that is all verified to be good, we can go ahead and reinstall our bottom case here. Uh, we are missing two pentalobe screws, which we're gonna grab off camera and put in for our customers so they have a full set of screws holding the bottom case on again. Uh, but remember the longest ones go at the top and the shortest ones go at the bottom. That's gonna wrap up today's video though. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And we'll be sure to help you out. If you guys are interested in mail-in repair, specifically for this MacBook or any other device you may have, we do offer that. It'll be linked in the description below or available at techdep.com. Same with every single part and tool you saw in today's video. And if you guys are looking for any data recovery work or PC builds, we do it all every day. Let us help you out. We'll see you guys in the next episode.